All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to day three of Open Campus. Um, for those of you who are brand new to Open Campus, may just be joining us. I want to take a minute and start with a recap of what this whole event is all about. Um, so this is the first time that we've ever done anything like this at Maven Analytics. We're running this Open Campus through the end of the month, so through next Tuesday, the 31st. And it basically means that we're ungating the entire Maven Analytics platform to everyone for free for the rest of the week. Uh, that means you'll have access to our self-paced courses, our learning paths, our career resources, skills assessments, data playground, uh, portfolio hosting tools, everything. So please make sure that you're taking full advantage, that you're digging in there, rolling up your sleeves, taking some courses, earning some credentials, uh, and really making the most of this opportunity. So as we're getting started here, um, I would love for everyone to just drop a note in the chat. Let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, it's, it's morning for some of us. It's afternoon. It might be late night. Uh, and it's really great to see just which countries and continents are, are represented as we come here together. Uh, so it looks like we've got some Saudi Arabia, Florida, India, Thailand, Netherlands, Ireland, Minnesota, Canada. It's fantastic. I love seeing this. So uh, one other thing that we're doing as part of Open Campus is that we've been running these fantastic live expert-led sessions this week as well. Um, today is actually the third and final day of our live sessions, and the theme of the day is data journeys. So we've got some awesome presentations on tap that you don't want to miss today. We're going to kick it off with a presentation from Chris Bruhl, our lead Python instructor here at Maven. Uh, about common analytics roles and how to find your perfect path. Um, we'll share some tools to help you get started if you're not quite sure which direction you want to go. In about an hour, we're going to have an incredible interview with John Poller and Kristen Kerr. Kristen is an absolute force in the data space. Um, she has been a faculty member, an author, a speaker. She's a consultant, and she has an amazing career path and some incredible insights that you don't want to miss. So that's going to be an incredible session happening at 11 a.m. Eastern time. After that, we'll have our very own Alice Zhao joining us at 12 p.m. Eastern to talk about some lessons that she's learned working through more than 400 data science projects. That's going to be a really fun session with Alice. And then John Pollard is going to close out our day and wrap up the week with a really nice actionable, practical, step-by-step -step guide to help you do everything you need to do to launch a successful data career, whether you're brand new to the space or if you're transitioning into a data role for the first time. So if you weren't able to join us on Wednesday or Thursday, just want to give a very quick recap of what we covered in days one and two. Day one was all about data skills. So we kicked off with a really fun session with John and Enrique talking about how to get started with Excel and SQL, the Swiss army knives of analytics. From there, Aaron Perry did a great deep dive into Power BI desktop fundamentals. Then Chris joined us for how to learn Python for data analysis as well, running through some, some libraries like Matplotlib, Seaborn, Pandas, Base Python, some awesome demos there in that session. And then I closed off day one with data visualization and storytelling pro tips. If you weren't able to join the live sessions, the good news is that these were all recorded and you have access to view all of the sessions that we've done. I dropped a comment in the uh, beginning of the chat at the top there. If you don't see it, let me know. But that's going to get you links to the upcoming sessions today, as well as recordings from all of our previous sessions. Um, so someone asked, how am I feeling? Uh, if anyone joined my sessions on day one, uh, I, was, I was kind of a wreck. Had a pretty bad case of pneumonia that I was fighting through. Um, feeling better today. My voice isn't quite there. Um, thank you for asking. I appreciate it. Uh, that's why Chris is going to help take the take the reins for this first presentation today. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely on the mend. So thank you very much. Um, last recap here, day two on Thursday. This was all about data careers. Um, we had an awesome session with Lauren Rosenthal and Annie Nelson about how to transition into a data career from other types of fields. Um, Dustin Shymack at 11 Eastern talked about some really interesting data job trends for 2023. 
Enrique covered how to build an incredible project portfolio and how to host it on Maven's showcase platform. And then uh, Aaron actually ran this one, but we did a great session on tips and frameworks for acing even the toughest analyst interviews. Um, so that brings us to our current session today. Uh, again, we're going to kick off and talk about common analytics roles and how to find your path. So without further ado, I'll hand the reins over to Chris Brule. And Chris, why don't you take it away? All righty. Thank you for the introduction, Chris. And, um, you know, the main reason why I'm doing this uh, is because my name is also Chris uh, and my voice is very powerful this morning. So uh, it's a good, good handoff here. But uh, good morning from Los Angeles. It's uh, 7 a.m. So I haven't seen any movie stars just yet. Um, but today we are going to be talking about finding your path in the data space. So let me go ahead and get my screen already. Um, all right. Can you see my stage, Chris? Just the slides. Looks great. Awesome. All right. And so, um, this presentation is going to be particularly useful for folks who are new or looking to transitioning into the data space. If you are an experienced data professional already, I think there's still going to be a lot of great stuff for you, but a few of the slides, you might be like, yeah, I know that already. Um, so just fair bit of warning. Um, but the intent of this presentation is to really help kind of cut out a lot of the noise that you might see when looking at data roles out there on LinkedIn or other job posting sites and try to distill things down to what's really important when it comes to choosing you know, a data role or a field within the analytics space. And so to start, right, again, this is the piece I might not have to sell a lot of you on, but why analytics? Why would somebody join the field of data and data analytics to begin with at all? And quite simply, the world runs on data. I think it was a quote by McKinsey that said, data is the oil of the 21st century. And there are a lot of ways to interpret that quote. Uh, but fundamentally, right, the economy of the 20th century, the world industrialized, and a lot of that industrialization was built on fossil fuels. That led to immense gains in productivity and brought the world closer together than ever before as new forms of transportation uh, were developed. And the 21st century, one only needs to look at the you know, top 10 companies on the S&P 500 to realize that the, the most the biggest collectors of data in our world are also some of the most valuable companies out there. And our world is increasingly run on data. You know, every action that you're taking on your phone is being collected somewhere and used to help improve a business's profitability, right? Uh, but data is everywhere. However, if it's just sitting in a database as, you know, bytes of data, it's really not doing anything. What brings value to data is analytics and data analysts like yourself. Uh, we need analysts to translate that raw information, right? It's sitting in a database. It's just like oil that's sitting in the ground. It hasn't been tapped. It hasn't been able to have any value added to it until we're able to transform that raw information into insights and outcomes. And so just as a general, um, I guess if we want to look more deeply at what makes analytics uh, an exciting and uh, I think really desirable uh, career path, uh, we have quite a few for you. Um, so one, you know, most of us work to live. Uh, and so having a high average salary is a very strong pull for a lot of folks into the data analytics space. And on top of that, I think you'll find that most data analytics roles have really strong uh, work-life balance, which leads to high job satisfaction. So as somebody who transitioned into the data space from supply chain management, where I was often on calls late at night with Asia and Europe from North America and having to you know, scramble to make sure shipments got delivered or uh, problem solve on the fly and travel abroad, uh, data analytics is a very stable, you know, show up to the same place, do your work, um, you're, you're, it's, it, it tends to be a really nice work-life balance. Um, maybe if you go into, uh, you know, high finance, you will be working longer hours, but your salary might also help offset that. Um, we also see a strong and growing demand for talent. Um, so there will be ups and downs in the general economic climate. You know, so, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, uh, you know, tech layoffs recently. 
Uh, but we're already seeing a lot of those layoffs in this field start to get erased. And long term, we see a long, we see a strong secular growth for data talent, as there are still many firms who have barely scratched the surface of leveraging their data properly. Uh, probably my favorite thing about uh, the data analytics space, and one of the reasons why I love being here, is that the skills that you learn as an analyst are highly versatile and transferable. And that can apply to both a technical perspective as well as some of the other pieces of what we call the analytics tri trifecta, right? So if you can query an SQL database at one company, you can query an SQL database at another company. If you can build strong visualizations, that's going to apply regardless of which role you're in. And so, and additionally, the, those softer skills, communication, if you're able to sell the results of your analysis, that's going to be something you leverage at any data role, as well as the ability to think critically about business problems, design things like metrics that are going to be important for the business. Um, you know, in my career, I transitioned, uh, I worked at the same insurance company, but I transitioned from optimizing call centers to working with actuaries to help improve actuarial processes with data science techniques. I knew nothing about actuarial techniques, but what I did have was the technical skills to build statistical models. I had the ability to problem solve and I had the ability to communicate with those actuaries to help understand their challenges and help solve them and sell them on my solutions. Um, and so you have this tremendous ability to not only shift between different departments and companies, but also industries because these skills are so transferable. Um, these roles require a unique blend of creative and analytical thinking, as well as you really do have an opportunity to make a real impact. Um, one of my favorite days at Liberty Mutual where I used to work was, um, I think quarterly, we would do what's called an analyst roundtable. And analysts might have had three months of experience. They might be presenting their first analysis up through, you know, senior leaders, you know, director level data scientists presenting to our executive team. And the impact of these analyses, um, if, if they were selected for this round table, were usually tremendous across the board. But the fact that, you know, three month, you know, folks that were three months into their career were getting a chance to present to our presidents and vice presidents alongside some of our most experienced analytical talent just shows you how much of an opportunity there is to make an impact with your analytical skills. And so if you are new to the field of analytics, or if you've just been on the job hunt recently, you might see something that looks like this. There are dozens, if not hundreds of flavors of analytical job titles. So things like performance analyst, operations analyst, quantitative analyst, information analyst, business intelligence analyst, <laughs> you know, I could go on and on and on. Um, but it's important to understand that at the core, all of these flavors of analytics, um, really boil down to using data to make smart decisions. And a lot of these roles, if you look at the actual skills required, will look a lot more similar than the job titles that they're hiring for. And so this again speaks to the transferability and versatility of the skills you learn as an analyst. Um, and here at Maven, we've sort of tried to distill down all of this noise into about four distinct common data roles. And so this is you, uh, which path are you going to choose? Uh, we say there are about four. So starting with BI or data analyst, this is, I think, I think I would say the most common data role, uh, largely due to its versatility, uh, but a business intelligence or data analyst role may be a good fit for you. If you love analyzing data for insights and convincing stakeholders to act, there is a significant sales component to this role from the sense that you are selling your insights to convince other people to make decisions. So if it's, it's exciting to be part of that process and really put yourself out there and put your analytics out there uh, to help change and improve the business, then this is an ideal role for you. Uh, you also have the opportunity to solve a wide variety of business cases and open-ended tasks. So oftentimes you'll be asked, why are sales declining? And it's up to you to hone in on the factors that are affecting sales and you know solve those and that can be quite challenging those open-ended tasks don't have a clear set of steps to get to the answer but if you like having these broad problems that require critical thinking to solve you will probably enjoy this role and finally uh, because of the versatility that data analysts are required to bring to the table 
If you want to build a deep skill set from data engineering to analysis and visualization, this is a great role for you. You do have the opportunity to really specialize in a specific technical stack, but you'll always find that you are trying to add a little bit more to round yourself out better. Moving on to data vision specialist, not surprisingly, this is a little bit more specialized role, uh, but this would be a good fit for you if you love designing visuals, right? Uh, to tell stories and bring data to life. So if you really love the aspect of visual design um, and communication, this could be a strong role for you because you get a chance to flex both your creative and design skills alongside your critical thinking skills. Um, and generally speaking, this might require a little bit less hardcore number crunching, and you might be working with more prepared data under specific project guidelines. So generally speaking, you already have the uh, guidelines for what needs to be visualized, and you just need to execute on making that visual the best that it can be. Moving up to almost the opposite end of the spectrum, a data engineer or database admin might be a good role for you if you enjoy building data infrastructure and engineering data database systems. Excuse me, that coffee's still kicking in. Um, if you prefer concrete technical tasks over open-ended business tasks and would rather build and design databases than perform visual and exploratory analysis. And so this is an area of the data space that I often have wondered why people go into this. Um, but ironically enough, my wife is moving in this direction. And one of the major reasons why is she, first of all, is an amazing technical talent. Um, so she is far more efficient than most of her peers at building data pipelines. Um, and additionally, um, she sort of balks at some of the politics that are associated with selling your insights as an analyst. So she is an analyst currently, but she's moving closer to the space because you might come up with the best analysis and prevent and you know present your narrative for why, but ultimately, decision makers are going to make the final say on the direction of the company. And so if your analysis makes recommendations that are at odds with you know, those of another team, you might find that demoralizing or you might find the, you know, that invigorating and you know, wanna go back and refine your insights to prove your point further. Uh, but for her, she's realized that she can move more quickly in her career um, and achieve her own career goals more quickly by moving into this technical specialist role as opposed to that more analytical role. And where I ended up landing my data career was data scientist. And so data science or machine learning engineer might be a good fit for you if you love to program and write code, if you enjoy math and statistics, if you can distill complex topics and communicate them clearly. And finally, you might prefer one-off projects over dashboard design, maintenance, and ongoing performance reporting. And so, one thing I want to point out here is that even though we have defined four distinct roles, there are often still gray areas between these roles. So as a data scientist, um, you know, I might spend three to six months working on a predictive modeling project. Uh, I get buy-in, I prove that my model is going to improve a business process. And then the next three months, I put on my analyst hat, monitoring my model via a dashboard, and trying to understand if the performance is lower, I'm doing exploratory analysis to understand if it was a business change or if my model is actually what is underperforming. Um, and so, and additionally, in order to get that model into production, I might put on my data engineer hat and so on. Uh, whereas an analyst might realize that with a little bit of machine learning, they can really help solve a complex analysis. Maybe building a linear regression model is going to help them isolate the factors that they need uh, to really dive, you know, to really um, solve a business problem. And so while we do think that these are four distinct roles, we still want to point out that you might be dipping your toe into all areas of this triangle as a data professional throughout your data career or square, not triangle. Um, and so one other conversation that you might hear in uh, social media on LinkedIn is business intelligence first data science. And at Maven, we take a little bit different view of this conversation. We argue that it's data business intelligence plus data science. And so while both of these roles have, you know, distinct, um, you know, distinct responsibilities and tasks, um, there is 
there is some overlap. And again, if you're able to play on both sides of this, you're only going to be stronger at either role. So business intelligence analysts are typically focused on descriptive analytics. What happened? Why did it happen? And how can we learn from it? Whereas data scientists are typically focused on predictive and prescriptive analytics. What will happen in the future? How can we prepare for it? Business intelligence often deals with specific known questions. So why are sales declining? Which products drive the highest return on investment? Whereas data science often deals with unknowns. Which employees are likely to churn? Which product will a customer purchase next? And oftentimes being able to dip your toe across this you know, imaginary line we've you know, drawn down the middle here can help you get better at your job. So as a data scientist, before I really want to start building predictive models, you know, I'm going to build a model that predicts which employees are likely to churn. I'm probably going to first start with what are the root causes of churn, which is more of a traditional business intelligence or analytics question, right? Um, and a lot of the work that analysts do basically leads to the need for data science or predictive models as well. Business intelligence analysts tend to emphasize self-service database analytics and visualization tools like Excel, SQL, Power BI, and Tableau, while data scientists tend to work more in the open source stack. So we have an emphasis on statistics and programming tools designed for flexibility and agility like R, Python, and the open source libraries that belong to those programming languages. Business intelligence is designed to deal with static structured data sources uh, so our SQL databases, Excel worksheets with pre-planned relational models, and data scientists still play heavily with those static structured data sets, but they might also be asked to work with high velocity or unstructured data like text, audio, images, or Internet of Things signals. Uh, typically, you know, data scientists just have a few, few more tools in their tool belt to deal with some of these more complex or unstructured problems. The goal of business intelligence is to identify patterns and trends to turn data into insight, while the goal of data science is to test hypotheses through experimentation and iteration. So will my statistical model outperform the current process that we have in place, et cetera. And the deliverables of business intelligence professionals tends to be visuals, reports, and dashboards, while data scientists tend to develop or deliver algorithms and statistical models. But I think in a more important conversation than specific roles is the underlying skill set that all data professionals need to be effective in their roles. And that's where Maven has developed the analytics trifecta. And so we view this trifecta as the three most important skills that data professionals really need to know. And these are going to be the skills that separate good analysts from great ones. So we want strong strategic thinking, technical proficiency and communication skills. And we call this the analytics trifecta because it represents those three core skills, which can help produce exceptional results at every stage of the workflow. Let's go ahead and dive into each one of these elements here. Strategic thinking is absolutely critical. And unfortunately, this is one of those things that really does get sharpened through experience, but strategic thinking is going to be what shapes the direction of your analyses, which analyses that you work on. The goal here is to start thinking like a business owner so that you can identify opportunities to improve the health and performance of the company. So if you can understand business goals and pain points, identify key factors for success or failure, and design clear tactical analyses and measurement plans to drive desired outcomes, that is going to require some strong strategic thinking. And as I mentioned, you know, nothing beats real world experience, but reading business case studies can be a great way to develop your strategic thinking skills. So if you want to Google Harvard, you know, cases, you'll find that Harvard Business School, which is a case based form of education, dives into a lot of real world business cases that is, and those are resources that you can leverage uh, to start thinking about some business pain points and what they, what actions they took to solve those business problems. And particularly if you're thinking about joining from you know, the data field, you might want to think about it from a data perspective. What data did they use to reach these conclusions? Um, the good news, and, and the good news is that 
where strategic thinking is really going to power your career is in terms of how quickly you advance. So typically, if you join a company at, as, at a junior level, you're going to be somewhat uh, mentored through and shepherded through the process. And you'll often be given you know, much more concrete steps to take. But as you want to jump from a junior analyst to a senior analyst, senior analysts and lead analysts are going to be responsible for generating ideas of analyses they want to tackle and executing those from idea to presentation and driving the business forward. So to start, you will often be given, hey, look at this data, calculate these metrics and report back to me and we'll, we can interpret those together. But as you begin to get more experience, you're going to be expected to start you know, making the decisions around your analysis yourself. Next up, we have technical proficiency. And because you are joining us on a call here at Maven, where we teach technical skills primarily, uh, you're probably not too surprised by this one. But technical proficiency is the ability to actually execute your analysis. So if you just have strategic thinking, you could think of all of the questions you want to answer. But if you're not able to execute with your technical skills, you're not going to get too far in solving that business problem. So you'll need to be able to write code or build ETL pipelines visualize that data, et cetera. And having strong, well-rounded technical skills will allow you to contribute to a broader range of analytics projects, work efficiently, and clearly showcase and show off your skills. Um, I, I think Chris Dutton knows this well, but if you are known as the Excel expert at work, you will find yourself pulled into a lot of projects, which is a little bit of a double-edged sword, but ultimately if you're viewed as an expert in a technical topic, you will find that you have a lot of opportunities to impact, um, you know, where and you know, a lot of different projects. Um, but one thing that we want to point out here is that most people tend to focus a little bit too much on the technical side of things when they're starting out, and too little on strategic thinking or communication. So make sure you're finding a balance. You know, it, it's really easy to continue to take courses to sharpen your technical skills while neglecting, you know, focusing on strategic thinking and communication. And, you know, it's, it's understandable to see why it's, it's easy to continue to take technical um, courses, but it's a little bit harder to actually really cultivate those strategic thinking and communication skills. Um, but, you know, one thing, you know, if you notice that if you feel very confident in your technical skills, but you find that you're not able to land roles, there's a good chance that you need to revisit or really you know, work on your strategic thinking and communication skills. And finally, these communication skills, we've discussed this a little bit throughout this presentation, but analysts, uh, analysts are the ones translating that raw data to end users. So your ability to communicate what data you pulled, why you pulled it, and why the metric that you think your company needs to improve is important is absolutely essential to your success. So this includes all forms of outbound communication, whether that's written, visual, verbal, nonverbal, as well as the ability to listen and interpret feedback correctly. If you're not able to listen to your stakeholders and understand what their pain points are and um, you know, what their concerns about the business are, it's going to be hard for you to come up with a solution that helps improve whatever they're concerned about. Um, and so it's an absolutely important skill to have because oftentimes analysts act as internal consultants for the business and consulting is just as much about listening as it is about talking and so people respond to stories not data points so you always need to aim to create a clear story and narrative that engages users and drives them towards the key insights if you just present a deck with 50 different charts and say it's obvious isn't it people are not going to know what you're talking about. You need to walk them through what your thought process was, what the data means, and get them to the same point of view that you do by crafting a compelling and logical narrative. And so if you're able to ma master the analytics trifecta, you will find that you're able to have success, significant success in this field. And so some key takeaways here, I know that was a lot. Um, and hopefully this is just getting you to think about the factors um, that you should be considering as you choose your path through the data landscape. Uh, but the key takeaway here, first of all, is that demand, analytics demand for analytics talent is strong and on the rise. 
So data is playing an increasingly critical role in business and analysts are the ones who give it meaning. Data analytics skills are powerful and versatile. You'll find that you have immense flexibility in your career. Um, if you don't like the industry or department you're in, your skills, your, your skills should translate well to others. Uh, and you'll find that you have the ability to add value and impact to virtually any company working with data. All analytics roles are ultimately about making smart and data-driven decisions. There are a lot of different specialties and flavors of analytics but they mostly use that the same set of core skills, which ties directly into our analytics trifecta. The skills that are really important, right? Tools will change, um, but if you have strong strategic, technical and communication skills, um, you'll need to make sure that you have a balance of those in order to succeed. So focus on building that trifecta of skills, strategic thinking, technical proficiency and clear communication. And so really quickly, I want to show you guys a tool that we have on our website. It's called the Find Your Path tool. Um, and you can see the URL down below. So I'm going to go to www.mavenanalytics.io slash find your path. And we'll see what career Maven recommends for me. Um, so one second here. If anyone has any questions while Chris is pulling this up, um, feel free to post them in the chat or the question tab down at the bottom. And then we'll, we'll take some time to do some open discussion at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and feel free to think through these as I go through this. Um, but the first question here is, I want my work to drive tangible and measurable outcomes for the business. I love creating impact for the business, so I'm gonna say strongly agree here. I enjoy both left-brain analytical and right-brained creative thinking. I tend to agree. Um, I like to make jokes and I also like to think, so maybe that's right. Um, I would rather design data models and databases than charts or dashboards. I would disagree with that. Um, I like to think creatively and have a good eye for visual design. I would probably say I like to think creatively, but uh, as Chris knows, my eye for visual design is maybe a little bit subpar. So I'll say disagree. Um, I enjoy building systems that tie information together from multiple sources. Uh, I'll say neutral. I, I find you know that puzzle a little bit fun, um, but I don't like it to be the focus of my work. I ex enjoy exploring and analyzing raw data, data for meaningful patterns and insights. I do really love a good exploratory analysis. I enjoy using open source programming tools and languages. As a Python instructor, I sh certainly hope so. I enjoy the challenge of solving a wide variety of business cases and open-ended tasks. I would agree. I prefer a little bit more definition than some analyst questions, but I still like that open-ended nature. Um, I want to focus on predictive analytics. Yes, I teach data science. I, I, that is my focus. Um, I can clearly translate the output of analysis and communicate findings in clear and simple terms. I'd agree. I enjoy visual design to communicate data-driven stories and insights. Um, I'll say neutral. I can distill complex topics into clear and simple terms and communicate them to non-technical audiences. I'll strongly agree with that one. I want to understand and contribute to the full analytics workflow from data prep and QA through analysis and visualization. I'll say agree. I enjoy wrangling and transforming raw data so that others can visualize and analyze it. I don't like to do it so other people can do it. I like to do it so I can, so I'll say disagree. Um, I would rather spend time designing charts and visuals and cleaning, transforming, or modeling raw data. I'll say neutral. I like both, uh, but my favorite is predictive modeling. I'm comfortable with math and statistics. Once again, I sure hope so. Um, I prefer specific tasks over broad open-ended projects. I'll say neutral. I prefer to be focused on behind the scenes work rather than presenting to stakeholders. As someone who's presenting uh, to you guys, I would say disagree. Otherwise I wouldn't be in this role. And fine, uh, you know, two more. I prefer projects with clear and concrete objectives as opposed to open-ended or exploratory analysis. I'll say neutral, I like a balance. 
And finally, I'm interested in working with very large or complex data sets, including unstructured non-tabular data. I will strongly agree here. And now it's going to calculate my path. And what do you know? I got data scientist, um, which is the role that I worked in before joining Maven. And you know, one thing I want to point out about um, the survey is that I think it's really important to think about um, the questions and what, what you like and what you don't like as you're choosing your path. But this isn't the end all be all. This isn't a deterministic thing where if this quiz says data scientist, you must work as a data scientist. But if you get a result that is surprising, it's a very good opportunity to think about um, what questions led to that result. And you might be surprised that uh, you might enjoy a role that you hadn't considered uh, more than you thought you would. Um, so that concludes our Pathfinder tool. I highly suggest taking a look at that. Uh, let's go ahead and open the floor to questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. That was fantastic. Um, I dropped a link to that Pathfinder survey in the chat if anyone would like to run through that themselves. And just to echo Chris, I think it's a a great thought starter, a great start, starting point. Um, if you're not really sure which direction might feel right to you, um, it also recommends what courses you might want to dip your toe into, um, depending on which path it kind of points you to. So a uh, really nice way to just kind of get a little bit of guidance in addition to the tools we have, like the, the personalized learning plans. So let's see, we've got a couple questions coming through here. Uh, first one from Alexandre, I understood from yesterday's sessions that the job market was very tough for analytics. What's your view? Chris, Any? what's your take on kind of current state of the job market for, for analytics? Any Anything you're seeing right now? Yeah, um, I guess at least locally, um, I've been hearing a lot about um, hiring freezes uh, starting to thaw, right? Um, so I, I've been hearing that like, several of the tech companies that had, you know, those layoffs, they kind of overhired for talent going into the pandemic. They were also sort of trying to keep talent away from each other and then realized that it was expensive to do that. Um, and so there was this kind of pause on hiring in the tech industry. Uh, but what I'm hearing is that, and I'm starting to see in my alumni networks, et cetera, is a little bit increased pace in hiring. Uh, I think particularly, you know, I'm not an economist by trade necessarily, but um, I think there was massive fears of a recession in the United States, and we're starting to see some of those fears abate. Uh, I still don't think, you know, we're not in the golden age of data hiring that we were immediately before in you know, that first bit of the pandemic, but I'm, I'm starting to see that, um, at least from my anecdotal evidence, that things are starting to pick up again. I don't know if you have any thoughts, Chris. No, I, I'm, I'm seeing the same thing. And all I would add to that is just during times where hiring, um, hiring is tough or where competition is fierce for, for data roles, this is the perfect time to really self-assess, think about your skills gaps, hone those skills and make sure that you're doing everything you can to present yourself, um, you know, in the strongest possible light and put your best foot forward. Um, so that when you are competing for those jobs, uh, you're giving yourself the best chance that you possibly can. And a lot of the sessions that we walked through yesterday about prepping for the, the analyst interview, about building a project portfolio. Those are like solid gold. If you're not working through those frameworks or applying those tips, um, now is a great time to do that if you're in the market. And we also have an entire course called Launching Your Data Career that covers those topics, as well as some others like how to build a personal brand, how to build a rock solid LinkedIn profile, things like that. Um, so that's all I would add to that one. Um, but a great question and great answer. Next question. This is a good one. So I'm currently transitioning into a data career and already know I want to specialize in data science. Should I be looking for junior scientist roles or would it make more sense to have a broader focus, including analytics roles to get a foothold in the wider data market? Chris, that's a good one for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, bunch of upvotes on this one. This is a popular question. Yeah, no, this is a really great question. Um, and I, I actually just put out a um, medium article about how to transition into the data science space. Um, I can find that and share a link once I'm done talking. Um, but I think, I think it's good to hedge your bets um, a little bit. I think, 
you know, as I mentioned in that presentation, the analytics trifecta is something that will serve you well, both in traditional data roles as well as uh, data science roles. Um, obviously, if you're interested in data science, then I think that would steer you more towards open source tools like Python and a, a focus on that as opposed to, you know, maybe going through a, a deep dive into something like Power BI. Um, but data science roles are challenging to get and there are, you know, lengthy requirements often for doing those. Uh, and one successful path that I do see into uh, the data science space is, is trying to work on an analytics team that's adjacent to data science. Um, but in general, as if you are trying to break into data science, you will need to start with junior data science roles. Uh, but if you also need to eat and feed yourself in the meantime, um, you know, you, you, you could serve yourself well by starting out as something like a product analyst. You'll find that you're working closely with data scientists. Um, it's a little bit challenging question, you know, to, to really answer because it is a strategic question. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you will find that it is easier to get a toehold in the data science market, particularly if you're not coming out of a, a formal degree program uh, by starting in a, a more traditional data role and then, you know, expressing interest in working your way towards those. You can always continue to augment your skills while you get paid as an analyst. And you'll find that having some data experience gives you more credibility when you're looking to break into a more technical role like data scientist. It is hard to come straight out of um, you know, no experience, no um, you know, referrals, et cetera, into a data science role. Um, so there are a number of paths you can take, but I would suggest focusing on a broad set of skills while you know, tweaking your specialty towards data science there. Uh, and let awesome. me go ahead and post that article in there. Yeah, and while, while Chris is posting, I'll share my perspective, kind of answering a similar question, but from my point of view, as someone who's worked in the business intelligence realm my whole career, um, when I launched my career after college, um, I was a, an entry-level data analyst for an advertising agency. I was a marketing analyst here in Boston. And in hindsight, I didn't do this strategically at the time, but in hindsight, that was such a good decision for me because it allowed me to get exposure to the role that analytics can play in so many different verticals and industries. So this advertising agency had clients in healthcare, in transportation, in energy, in finance, and I was getting exposure to projects in all of those different areas. And that as a young analyst kind of early in my career was such a valuable experience because it just gave me exposure to, again, the, the role that data can play in so many different ways and the types of use cases that, you know, a bank might be working on versus an insurance company versus a retailer or an e-commerce website. Um, so if you're at that stage where you're looking to get your foot in the door, start a career or transition into data, I might recommend thinking about what are those types of roles, whether it's uh, at a consultancy or an ad agency or something similar, where you can get that broad exposure, as opposed to going into a very niche specialized role straight from, from the get-go. That also gave me um, kind of a really good, good um, platform to transition my career or expand my career in all sorts of different directions. I didn't feel pigeonholed at all. So looking back, that early exposure was so valuable to me. And if there's any way that you can get that, if you're not sure exactly where you want to go, um, I'd highly encourage it. Yeah. And honestly, like I, um, I was a little bit nervous. I was going to get analyst or BI uh, analyst on my Pathfinder survey because I found that I loved analytical work almost more than I love the data science part of it. Like ultimately what I loved was solving business problems. And, um, you know, one thing that I found is, you know, the first or second time you build a, a data science or, you know, machine learning model and deploy it, it's a very exciting feeling. Um, but oftentimes, you know, what, what really gets you excited beyond that is, uh, just that continuous process of solving business problems. And my analyst peers that were on the same team, I felt often got you know, more interesting questions to tackle while I was more focused on maintaining this technical process. So there were times when I was 
envious of my analyst friends as a data scientist as well. Um, and, and I think that just speaks to the fact that, um, you know, these are all great roles. So there is overlap. Um, but, you know, I think it is a little bit easy to get, you know, dazzled by some of the aspects of data science in particular. Right on. Um, got an awesome question from Elena. What analytics roles do you see being impacted the most by AI in the foreseeable future? Um, I'll start with a quick answer and then and I'd love to get your perspective too, Chris. Our stance here at Maven about AI is that it is another tool um, in the arsenal for data professionals of all, of all types. Um, it's incredibly valuable. Um, it can accelerate your skills, but you still need to focus on the foundations. Um, what we're seeing is that the types of tasks that AI uh, is most effective at replacing are the ones that don't require as much of those uniquely human skills, like creativity, like strategic thinking, like empathy. So if you're in a data role that is very heavy on kind of cut and dry data QA, data prep, um, basic data modeling or simple exploratory analysis. Um, we're seeing that AI tools like, like ADA and GPT-4 um, are quite effective at, at those types of tasks. So I think those types of roles may be pretty heavily um, influenced and impacted by AI. Um, the one kind of overarching theme that we, we always want to draw attention to is that we don't ever see AI replacing the need for human analysts and data professionals. Um, AI can, can develop some incredible outputs. It can build incredible models, but if there isn't a skilled operator behind the wheel who understands the foundations, it can be a recipe for disaster. So that's why we like to think of, of AI as a tool and a supplement to make great data analysts even stronger. Uh, Chris, anything you'd add to that? Uh, no, not too much. I think, um, you know, I think the fear of AI taking over our jobs is a little bit like fusion power. Like it'll, it's always 20 years away. Um, and I think at some point it, you know, might happen, but by that point, you know, there won't probably be too many other roles that are out there. Um, but you know, in the, in the far, far future, we'll have some sort of generalized intelligence that just solves all of our problems. But I do want to point out, um, we share a little bit more about our thoughts on our chat GPT for data analytics course. So we walk through a lot of uh, demos. I just posted the link, uh, but we share our general thoughts on analytics and then talk about both really strong use cases for a variety of tools as well as pitfalls. So there'll be plenty of times in this course where you'll see it, where, you're, where you'll see us ask chat GPT something and disagree quite strongly with what it's telling us. And again, like, it certainly makes us more efficient at these processes, but if you aren't able to spot when it's giving you nonsense, um, you're going to be led down a path of uh, probably some bad decision making in your career. Yeah, good call. That's a, that's a fun course, and there's a ton of demos that we run through in Excel, Google Sheets, Python, SQL, using ChatGPT and Google Bard to do things like comment code generate code, troubleshoot code, um, suggest analytical approaches and strategies. Really, really fun course. So definitely check that one out if you can. Um, awesome question, Elena. Next up from Javier, I'm going to start a data science bootcamp the following month, heavily focused on Python. What skills or features would you absolutely recommend to master to land a job as a dude, junior data scientist? Yeah, so um, I would absolutely say master the pandas library um if you i've taken a number of data science interview roles and uh, most tech companies will give you technical challenges on sql and python and primarily asking you to uh, perform moderate like simple to moderately challenging data manipulation tasks um, and most projects like that you do to, on take home like are going to be based on how efficient you are at processing and crunching the data. By the end of your data science bootcamp, you'll learn how to relatively quickly apply models. Um, so the, the, the skill is just being proficient and efficient at uh, data manipulation, just like a lot of other data roles. Um, in addition to that, like 
there are some additional tips I have, like make sure you know your algorithms inside and out. Uh, so know what the pros and cons of k-means clustering is, what the pros and cons of logistic regression is versus uh, gradient boosting, for example. Uh, but those are uh, things you can find on sites like Glassdoor. What 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 you know? What questions have been asked in interviews? But fundamentally, your ability to um, you know write clean code and manipulate data effectively is going to be the number one skill that you're really being screened for um, from like a technical perspective. Um, awesome. Um, one more quick one from Elena asking if I could share some of the specific use cases in my role for like an e-commerce analysis versus bank. Um, there were so many, I mean, the, the quick, some quick examples would be, you know, when you're working on bank banking or financial analytics, you might be thinking about things like, um, you know, fraud detection, for instance, you might be trying to optimize signups for credit cards or, or savings or checkings accounts. Um, E-commerce, some of the work that I was doing there would be uh, like purchase funnel analysis was a, a common one that we did where we would understand how every site visitor and consumer was clicking through the website from the home page to a product detail page, to a checkout page, to a payment page, to a shipping page, um, and so on. And we would be able to see, are there gaps or leaks in that funnel that we could um, identify through data and recommend optimizations to help uh, improve the conversion rate. So funnel analysis was a super common e-commerce one. Spent a lot of time working with General Motors um, in obviously automotive. And there we're trying to understand which site actions online most correlated with actual vehicle purchases. So if someone configures a model uh, for a, a Chevy Tahoe online, how predictive would that be of actual uh, propensity to purchase that vehicle? So things like that, just an incredibly wide range of, of projects and techniques that you're applying. And that's why it was such a great place um, to start my career. I spent about six years in that, in that agency. Um, Adrian asked about the percentage of roles recommended by our career finder tool. Uh, that's an awesome question and it would be a cool data set to look at. Um, I don't think we have it. I'm not sure if we can get that. Um, but if we can, that's certainly something we'll consider sharing. I think that'd be really fun to see. Um, and then we'll take one more real quick from Megan. Uh, what's your take on entry level roles that require building a lot of proficiency in proprietary tools or software like AlterX? Would it be preferable to get a role that requires you uh, to use freely available tools? Here, let me pull this one up. Um, or does it not matter in terms of career options down the line? This is a really interesting question. Uh, my two cents on it is that that shouldn't be the deciding factor in the role that you take. I think it, it, the bigger question is, is this a great company? Do you align with the culture? Does it seem like the type of work that you're excited about doing, the types of, of questions or, or the people, people you'd love to work with, like those are the more important questions in terms of mutual fit. I would say all else equal, if one company uh, required me to work with Alteryx or SAS or Stata or like a very, very like kind of specific tool all the time, and another one was focused on Power BI or Tableau or, or SQL, I might lean a little bit, you know, towards the latter, just again, because of the versatility and the broad applicability of those tools. But again, I think it's, it's certainly not the deciding factor in evaluating a role. Chris, anything you'd add on that one? Yeah, I, I mostly agree. I, um, I think in general, getting your first role in the space is, is goal number one. Uh, once, as we mentioned in that, that presentation, you know, most of your skills will be transferable. So whether you specialize in Alteryx or not, um, you know, odds are the next company will have a different suite of data skill, like data tools. Um, and so mastering the underlying analytics trifecta and being flexible in your tech stack is, is ultimately what's going to be what propels your career forward. But as Chris said, like, I have more confidence that companies will require SQL and Excel in 10 years than I do necessarily Alteryx. Um, I haven't worked with Alteryx myself, um, but I know that, uh, you know, if we, if we just think about what's used more broadly, I would, I would probably want to be specializing 
in, in, in getting a lot of reps with uh, tools that I know are, are staples across the board as opposed to specialized tools. Um, awesome. Um, and then the last like 30 seconds we've got, Gloria asked about cloud platform skills for uh, data engineering roles. A lot of postings require AWS. From my understanding, this is not my bread and butter, but uh, Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, I think those are the big three when it comes to cloud engineering. Uh, at Maven, we, we tend to focus uh, much more on the BI and data science side of the house. Data engineering, you can go very, very deep there. Um, we kind of help you get a start, but um, Chris, any thoughts off the top of your head in terms of kind of key skills to learn for someone who's trying to get into the cloud engineering side of things? Yeah, I think, I think like, yeah, to Chris's point, I wouldn't worry too much about at least for, you know, entry to mid-level roles, the specific platform. I think if you were, you know, looking for very senior roles, that might be where deep expertise is required. But if you're just breaking into the space, I would probably pick, um, either whatever is free. Some tools give credits to people who are learning and some don't. Um, or I would pick probably, I would just have bias towards AWS since it is the market leader. But for the most part, these tools, they have different names for their various services, but they all have the same services there. And in terms of what I would learn, this isn't something that we offer just yet, um, but it, a, a good project would be deploying a machine learning model in the cloud that queries some database that you set up and runs on a periodic basis. Basically, you want to be able to design, you want to focus on getting the ability to design an end-to-end -end data system that you know harvests raw data out of something like an S3 bucket, performs some sort of calculations or data manipulation on it using you know, EC2 instances or maybe you know, a big data tool, and then you know, deliver some sort of output somewhere like machine learning model outputs or predictive scores. And so there's, I think there's a lot of um, use cases you'll be able to find, like on sites like medium you'll see people walk through end-to-end -end projects um, that, that tackle those types of subjects but i think the first part would be mastering you know storage compute and various tools that connect data pipelines there at a high level awesome great stuff great questions thank you everyone thank you chris for for driving the session today um that was awesome tons of info tons of insight hopefully everyone found it valuable that takes us to the end of our first session of the day. Um, next up, we've got John and Kristen. Tons of value in that one. I'd highly recommend sticking around. It's going to be a really fun session. Um, so go ahead, check the chat for the link that I shared, and we'll see you all again soon. Thanks again.